Good evening, and uh, welcome to the Select Board's Fire Station Forum. Um, thank you for joining us, and uh, thank you to our panelists here today. Um, I'd like to uh, just run through how this forum will work, and uh, First, we'll talk about why, why we're here, um, which, uh, uh, and then we'll just review a meeting outline. Um, and that's introductions, which I'll make, and we'll have a brief history of the Fire Station Building Committee's work, which actually started before this Fire Station Building Committee. And then there'll be a question and answer format. Um, questions are going to be broken down into four categories. So that's location, safety, design and construction, and the transaction. And I'll repeat those, don't worry. Um, and then uh, we'll begin by addressing the questions that we've received in advance of the meeting, and then take five, 10 minutes for additional questions related to each topic. Um, a condensed version of each question is going to be read so that we can all understand the context of the remarks that will be made. And then um, again, after those are covered, we'll take additional questions. Um, and each person will have about two minutes to speak and uh, one turn per person until everybody has spoken. Um, and then we'll talk about how neighbors can engage in the design process of going forward with the fire station building committee and next steps and, um, and then we'll be concluded. So, um, so again, thank you everyone for joining us this evening and for taking time out. Uh, life is, is busy and, and very full, especially in this pandemic time. Uh, we've got that on top of everything else. Um, so let me please introduce to you first our guests and then I'll introduce the board. Uh, we have with us the chair of the Fire Station Building Committee, uh, Brian Walsh. And we also have the vice chair of the fire station building committee, Dan Clark. We have uh, Mr. Jeff Shaw, who is from the architecture firm, Mr. Shaw. And you, you mentioned it and I should know, I've seen enough documents, but what's um, your firm again? Context architecture. Context, thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, and members of the board who are in attendance this evening are Katie Conlon and Mike Zulis, Richard Wells, who's also our fire station building committee liaison, and Arthur Doyle, and also our uh, intrepid executive administrative assistant, Hillary Waite, and uh, Milton Cable Access, who we thank for, for um, helping us get on TV and, uh, and get all our, our uh, meetings recorded and posted on their website. So we're here this evening because we um, are looking at uh, um, putting a fire station at 432 Adams Street, uh, which is a parcel that's part of um, a, a small campus, if you will, owned by the uh, Catholic Archdiocese of Boston, Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Boston. And we uh, realized that there were community members who hadn't been following the fire station building committee's work very closely and um, wanted to give people an additional opportunity to um, ask questions and, um, and give us their opinions and also to uh, have more information uh, than, uh, than they had before. So, we're here and, and really appreciate the advanced questions. I, I think that's been very helpful, um, both to the fire station building committee and to the select board. So um, so that, that's that been very valuable and um, a great way to partner. So uh, um, we've done uh, introductions and now I would like to turn to Mr. Walsh to give us a brief history of the fire station um, process. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, so the, the fire station building committee was authorized at the May 2017 annual town meeting. Uh, we succeeded a fire space needs committee that was authorized in October of 2013. Uh, interestingly enough, they, they submitted their report 
in, in May of 2014. And they reference, and, I, and I'm, I'm going to type this brief and, and pertinent to, to your interest tonight, but they, ironically, they reference the fact that there was reports of previous fire station uh, committees, both in 1962 and in 1964. Those two reports, as well as the Fire Space Needs Committee report, recommended that we had to rebuild our fire stations. And so this is not something I think most of the town realizes two of the stations are more than 100 years old and there's some challenges in the small uh, station in East Milton that's the new one probably, I think it was in the uh, in the 60s. Um, but it's just sort of ironic that it's, it's this is not something new, it's, it's a dire need. Uh, that's what we presented to town meeting uh, recently and got approval for uh, securing some construction uh, money. But key findings from that fire station building, excuse me, the fire space needs committee that are pertinent to tonight is they concluded that you should, we should not as a town build the East Milton station on the existing site. They pursued and recommended that the town consider the current art center, Milton art center, which was previously the East Milton library. And they did that primarily because it was town owned. They didn't feel it was their purview to start securing other parcels or looking elsewhere. They held neighborhood meetings uh, and they met some pretty harsh opposition. I didn't uh, personally attend those meetings, uh, but know people that have, uh, and there was some pretty harsh opposition. When they presented their findings to the town meeting, and I've been a town meeting member since uh, the 1980s, I think it was probably the second harshest reaction I've watched at town meeting when they presented their findings and they said that they recommended that we build uh, the East Milton station on the current location of the East Milton Library, old, old East Milton Library, uh, Milton Art Center. Um, they, they, uh, it, the discussions, the strong opposition engendered several town meeting members to make comments, well, look, if we're going to pursue, because their recommendation was to, to the, the town, form a fire station building committee and get these buildings built. Town meeting members at the time strongly urged that other solutions and opportunities and locations for that East Milton station be looked at. So we received our charge in May of 2017, and uh, we finally were formed and fully active by September of 2017. We have an extremely talented 11 member committee that have worked hard on behalf of the town now for several years. What have we done? Well, mindful of the concerns over the good uh, the location for Engine 2 in East Milton, we tried to see first, and we thought this was important, we tried to see first if we could, if the town of Milton could be properly covered by having two fire stations instead of the three. Uh, even took it to the extent that we were able to use our vice chair, uh, very talented with a lot of uh, talented computer software, and we, we basically ran algorithms to computer software that said, hey, regardless of who owns it, pick the best two locations for two fire stations that could cover the entire town uh, the most and, and the easiest. So it's interesting that it picked two locations. Uh, and what was really interesting is it surprisingly picked one location very close to the current Atherton Street station. The second location it picked was very close to a property that's owned by the cemetery and the cemetery trustees at the corner of Center and Brook Road, which is the same parcel, interestingly enough, that's mentioned in, in one, of the, uh, uh, one of the inquiries uh, tonight. So we pursued that. We looked and said, well, look, let's see if we can make this work. We worked with the cemetery departments uh, and the trustees, and we were confident that if we needed to do this and we could do this with two stations, that we could work it out with, with the cemetery trustees. So very encouraging. So then we said we took five years of actual calls that the Milton Fire Department has made, and we ran it through a model that said, all right, if all, all those calls were responded to from those two locations, uh, could we meet the national standards? The standards, by the way, are you, ha you have to get to 90% of the calls within four minutes. That's the standard. So our cursory look with the, our best expertise 
said, we're, you know, we're right on the line. We think we might be able to do it. But realizing that we're not experts and there were firms out there who provided us as expertise and we had some cash to engage them, some funding to engage them, we did engage them uh, and had them run the analysis. They concluded that of the five years worth of work, only about, 100, about 185 of those that previously made it within the time frame would not. When we couple that as a committee recognizing that development is continuing in the town uh, and that we were already past the threshold in getting worse. And also, and I don't wanna take the time tonight, but I would encourage any resident to go up on YouTube and look at the, uh, there, there's some films up there uh, on run time, on uh, burn rate that are indicating the standards that that 90% was in four minutes, that might get reduced because the burn rates of how homes that have been built over the last 20 years is significantly faster and it's more poisonous and, you know, et cetera. Uh, so we felt we couldn't, in good faith, recommend to the town, we can do this with two stations. Oh yeah, we can't meet them all now. And uh-oh, what about the future? But we, we felt that effort, it was significant effort. We felt it was worthwhile. Uh, we have a full report. We reported our findings to uh, groups, including town meeting. And next we said, all right, well, what should we do next? Let's do a deep dive, even though the Space Needs Committee said you can't build on site East Milton. Let's do a deep dive. Can we rebuild at that current location? And we have a full deep report. We, we put together a subcommittee of us and then went off and did that and said, can you build a 21st century station on site? And even if we purchased some of the abutting sites, we determined you couldn't. I don't want to spend the time here tonight. We have that study. It's up on our, our website. It's available to anyone in, that's interested. So we concluded they were right. You can't really do it. And, and there's a variety of reasons. The size of the land, the location, which is you know traffic bound. Uh, it literally takes, if you, if you have to make 75% of the East Milton district, which is on the Milton side of the expressway, if you have to make... 90% of those in four minutes, the fire station without a traffic, the fire truck without a traffic clog spends up to a minute just to get around that little parcel and over located at the, at the post office corner, if you will, which is within sight. Well, they're losing a minute out of the get-go and, and there's traffic clogs. It's a narrow street. It gets clogged uh, in the morning and the evening. So uh, again, we concluded, they couldn't do that. So what else? To, well, what else could we do? We decided well we had to we had to do our best to pursue other properties. Uh, later on, Dan's going to go through a, a chart and he's going to show you some of those properties. But I just want to hit the most uh, obvious ones up front. We did look at can we build the fire station, the East Milton fire station, on the existing East Milton deck, because I think a lot of people would tell you that they'd be okay with it if there was some different use to it than what, what it's been. The answer to that is no. The deck was not built with the idea of supporting a fire station and fire trucks uh, over there. So it doesn't have that support. But as importantly, the, the deck was built with both federal and state grants that required the town to have pa a park there. And so if we were to change the purpose, we received uh, direction a few years ago at the time we looked at it, if we were to change the purpose of that, the town would be obligated to refund the property. So what do we do? We also looked at, there was the exit 10 off ramp if you're coming south on the expressway to get off in Milton, there's sort of a triangular plot of land there. We looked at that, would that work? It, it wouldn't. Um, and then, we looked, we went and met with the Cunningham Park trustees because they have a lot, as, if, as all of you know, if you look sort of across the street from the current Cunningham and Collicott schools, they have a large parcel of land that extends quite down, heading down towards uh, East Milton Square. They, they have uh, garden, vegetable gardens in there. There's a large parcel. And we felt for the pot size we needed, we'd take a half acre that that was something that might make sense. We pursued it hard and they concluded they could not because it's not within the purview of the trust to build a fire station. It has 
uh, definitions of what, what the purpose of that land has to be for. So we then put out an RFP. We put out a few RFPs. We requested the community, does anyone have property that we could use for an East Milton fire station? And frankly, St. Agatha's responded. We went down and looked at the, at the property. We met with them. And I know there's concerns here tonight, and I'm hoping that we can address your concerns. We certainly want to be open about it. But the general characteristics for what we're looking for, for a station to service the East Milton Fire District, that parcel hits very many key needs. Number one, it's more central in the East Milton Fire District. So now it can get to more of those sites in a, in a briefer period of time than it does today from the current site. Uh, it's on a main road. That's key. A, a, a fire truck can come out there, can turn right or left. There's great, there's visibility uh, there. And there's not, there is, we fully recognize that there is traffic in the morning. There's a school there. There's a church there. In fact, Richard Wells and I both uh, like to, to remind people we're both graduates of the St. Agatha School. We're very familiar with it. Um, so, but, you know, there are a lot of the calls, there are some calls today that the East Milton Engine 2 currently drives right down there. And frankly, when you've got a road that's wide enough, cars can quickly pull over and they can pass through the middle. That's not as an option they have as easily where they currently are. Um, so again, it we think it's a, a good spot for a lot of key reasons and we, and we hope that we can address concerns tonight. So I just want to provide that brief update, uh, Madam Chairman. I hope I didn't take too much time and uh, happy to uh, answer questions later. Thank you, Mr. Walsh, appreciate it. Um, so now we'll begin the question and answer um, portion of our forum. And, uh, and I, I think we're all um, very sorry that we can't do this in person. This is not ideal. Um, and um, it's, it's so much nicer when we can, can see each other. So because of that, I'd just like to let everybody know we have 36 attendees so far. And I, I'd also like to welcome Chief Madden. He joined us just a little while ago. But we have 36 people and um, we're eager, eager to, to, to hear now 37. I'm eager to hear from, from people. And um, again, we're, we have four categories. So we'll, we'll do location, safety questions, design and construction, and then talking about transaction uh, between uh, the town and um, the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Boston. And we'll take them in that order. And again, we'll do the prepared questions that people sent us ahead of time. And I, I just wanted to um, say that I appreciate the acknowledgement that everybody wants new fire stations and really cares about um, our firefighters and our fellow residents, right? Because this is for everyone, it's for the whole town. So we, we really did, did appreciate that. Um, and then after the prepared questions are answered, we'll open it up. So we'll, we'll open it up four times. <clears throat> And um, five to ten minutes um, for for each each little section. That hopefully it's closer to, to five because we will have answered things. Um, and when people ask questions, if they direct them to the chair rather than other people, and then I I'll I'll parcel them out to whomever uh, should be answering them. And um, and then as I said, we'll finish up with how neighbors can engage with the fire station um, building committee in the design process, because that's really what, what the next part of the process would be. It, there's really only a conceptual um, uh, um, drawing that gives enough that they were able to do estimates, but those details and, and things um, are, the, all that is, is still to be worked out. Um, and then next steps and, and, uh, and then we'll be finished, so. Um, Mr. Clark, are you ready? <laughs> okay, great. Um, but we, we didn't work out who would ask questions, um, you know, who would sort of condense the questions. So um, I'm, I'm happy to take a stab at it. And um, it, you can always add if I forget something that you think is key or I didn't, didn't include something. So the first, uh, the first topic is location. So, um, Let's see, a statement was made at 
meeting that the budget um, for the East Milton Fire Station would be about the same um, despite the location. So, um, so could could the the station be put um, at other another location and it would be the same or similar? Um, Yeah, uh, I, th I think I touched on this uh, in the webinar and then also in uh, the town meeting presentation that um, for the hard cost, the actual cost to construct the building and the contents that go in it, um, the majority of those costs are known and are kind of established based on how big the station needs to be, um, how many rooms, how many bathrooms there are, uh, things like that. So a large portion of the costs are known. What's not known between uh, different locations is the site specific work. So what utilities may need to be added, uh, what site, if there needs to be a demolition, if there's you know a lot of excavation that needs to happen. Um, but with it being a slab on grade building, uh, no basement, um, that kind of limits that a little bit. So we felt pretty confident looking across all the different options that uh, we had in our matrix or you look at the town in general, most locations where we're going to have to put it because we need about a half acre lot um, are going to probably be pretty similar within the town of Milton, especially within such a tight boundary of where the station needs to be. Most of the lots are similar um, in their existing conditions. So that, that was the context to that comment. And I hope that answers the question. Thank you. Um, so uh, the next question has to do with um, that matrix, the red, yellow, green matrix, as it's called. And um, the, uh, the, the person would like to see it and have uh, some explanation of the ranking. Yeah, so I'm going to, um, can we have Jeff Shaw uh, share, uh, capability to share a screen and while he's pulling that up. Uh, so this was a living document that we started pretty early on in the process of vetting out East Milton station options. And this was intended to be a easy to read for anybody to understand why our committee uh, was leaning towards certain options over the other. And it was supposed to be subjective. And it really leaned on the expertise of our project architect, Jeff Shaw and his team, our OPM, who both specialize and focus on public safety buildings and really focus on fire stations. So really leaning on them uh, over their years of experience, looking at other stations, looking at, uh, you know, they work at within the vast majority of their work is within the Milton area, uh, you know, in, inside 495 corridor. So, you know, they're, they're used to these densely populated uh, towns that Milton is similar to, uh, is. And so we really relied on them, but we wanted it to be easy to understand. We, we went back and forth. We considered a ranking number system, a letter system, but at the end of the day, we, we went with this simplified red, yellow, green uh, to kind of make it a little easier to, to understand and wade through the options. So uh, we came up with a lot of different site comparisons. Um, and this was really a living document. This, this changed. We, um, you know, this changed. We had a meeting uh, with a bunch of butters and also after the East Milton uh, update, I think it was in October, we got some feedback from the neighborhood and went back and looked at some of these and reevaluated it. Um, you know, so it was really that living document and refining it over time. So I'll let Jeff speak to the particulars on the left hand side. Um, but I did want to note that, you know, th these ones that ended up with colors were ones that had had more of an opportunity uh, when we did initial due diligence uh, to be potential options. Uh, and then there are additional sites, Cunningham Park, Center Street, Brook Road. Heritage Hall, resident, other residential lots that responded to the RFP process on Mechanic Street, um, Granite, uh, the East Milton parking deck. So there were other ones that, you know, on initial due diligence, our committee looking at it, it we, we were able to strike them out pretty quick without even taking it kind of that to that next level. Um, and that's what that was. It was kind of that initial re review of it to understand is, is it going to work from an operational standpoint uh, and then taking a step further uh, and doing the due diligence. And then once we got it narrowed down to three, taking, you know, kind of a step further and doing um, some site plan review and, and some rough conceptual design on it. And so I'll let Jeff speak to the particulars on the left though. Thanks, Dan. 
So on the left-hand side, there's a bunch of factors that we typically look at when we are trying to evaluate a site for fire stations specifically. And this isn't um, specific to Milton. It's in general for all fire stations that we look at, but we look at each one of these characteristics uh, when trying to evaluate a site. The first item is the size of the lot. Seems quite obvious. We wanted to make sure it's big enough to fit the program. In this case, the program had already been determined based on a lengthy and rigorous process that Brian had alluded to earlier. And so we knew how big the station needed to be. We knew the configuration. We knew how many bays it was going to have and um, generally where the program needed to be. And so we could easily determine how much space is needed on site for that program. Visibility, obviously very important for a fire department, um, both visibility from the fire department out onto the streets that they're serving, but also within the neighborhoods that the fire departments are located, on the streets they're located and in the town so that as an emergency response facility, if somebody had an issue they knew where the fire station was. It wasn't hidden in some obscure place in town. Vehicular access um, with the fire trucks, very important. We want to make sure they can easily get out from the, the station onto the roadways without having to make awkward turns, without having to, um, or at least as minimally as possible, interrupt traffic, um, not having to shut down streets uh, to make, um, to back into stations or to make wide turns. Uh, we also want to make sure that people coming to the station wouldn't have to interfere with the apparatus exiting. Buildability has to do with the site itself, um, the actual soils, topography, water features, rock, ledge, that sort of thing. Anything that is more challenging to build obviously is less advantageous. Uh, the need for phasing really comes in when you're looking at an existing building that might be on site and are we repurposing that or uh, re renovating that for fire use uh, and are there particular folks that need to be uh, temporarily housed or the project has to be split up into phases um, to make it work, which of course increases the duration of time to build and increases the cost. Site development cost goes very well with buildability issues and some of the other issues I've described. And it, Dan's already pretty much encapsulated that. We need to know what are the more expensive sites to build on. Um, general cost has to do with um, you know, the potential uh, to acquire the site um, and the impact of the uh, acquisition and the impact of the um, uh, development of the site itself. So, you know, are we built, are we renovating buildings? Are we taking down um, the uh, existing buildings, demolishing them? Um, are we having to build um, additional features, roads, that sort of thing? Uh, neighborhood Im impact, uh, pretty self-explanatory. Is it going to, is the, the vehicles exiting going to actually impact the neighborhood that it's in? Um, is there, is this going to be built in a tightly packed area that um, you know could have um, disruption from uh, vehicles exiting or is they exiting onto um, main thoroughfares. Uh, response time, um, Dan alluded to this earlier, doing a survey to conclude that the station location was, is within the uh, general area served by the fire station, um, critical for our fire department and wanting to make sure that it's as centrally located and easily accessible to all areas of the district, not favoring one over another. Uh, traffic impact goes hand in hand with vehicular access and really depends on, you know, are, is the addition of the fire station going to impact the traffic that already exists there? Uh, so knowing the amount of runs that are done by the station and uh, the amount of people that are expected to come visit the station uh, leads us to some conclusions there. We also want to make sure that the site has appropriate utilities, that there doesn't need to be uh, new gas lines, new power lines, that there's adequate service to the site. Uh, in the case of Milton, the zoning disruption is a little bit different because um, it's a municipal project and it's exempt from zoning, but we did put it on here as well just to uh, evaluate how much the site uh, sites would have to be um, 
um, potentially um, the development of the sites would potentially be impacted by a zoning um, uh, ordinance that's already in place, even though we technically are exempt. And then finally, public transportation um, as a convenience for employees getting to the station or the public getting to the station. Uh, is it near any public transit stops, any routes uh, that would be more convenient, and potentially lessen the impact of traffic? Thank you very much, Mr. Shaw. Appreciate that. Um, so uh, moving on, there's some specific questions about the, the three parcels, the existing site, um, the Adams Street site, and uh, or the St. Agatha site, and the Art Center site. So um, the, the first, uh, it will take the current location. Um, so why will the town um, not purchase three or four lots abutting the fire station? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, this is something that in, uh, Brian was kind of alluding to when we were evaluating the East Milton station and renovation or complete rebuild. Uh, this was something that we did evaluate. Uh, we did some analysis to see if um, one of the abutting lots, uh, one of the larger ones, uh, which would be to the northeast side, so down Adam Street towards Quincy, um, if we were able to procure that in some manner. Uh, what that would look like for a site. Um, or additionally, we looked at um, two lots uh, down granite, uh, what would be, I would call it to the south down the express rate. And um, we really got to the point where the lots are so small. Um, it's less, it's 0.16 acre, the existing lots, the budding lots are not that large. So we really got to the point in our analysis, uh, and I mentioned earlier, we really needed a half acre lot uh, for a new station. Uh, to meet the program needs. So uh, our committee and in, in discussing internally and then also with our liaison, Richard Wells, we really thought it was um, unachievable to have a, an expectation to procure the number of lots abutting the East Milton Station. Um, and then also in addition, um, a, procuring all those abutting lots uh, would fundamentally change uh, that business and commercial district um, in East Milton. So. For those reasons, we really didn't think it was an appropriate avenue to continue uh, with um, adjoining adjacent lots. Thank you. Um, so uh, uh, th there's a question about why the fire station can't be taken down and rebuilt, um, and and I, I don't I, I think that we've heard um, that it, it's not impossible, but um, but there are some deeper considerations. So if you'd like to speak to those, yeah, I'd, I, I'd actually um, pass that one off to Jeff Shaw uh, to answer if he's still willing and still there. Okay. Sure. Yeah, so um, the existing building, uh, it, it certainly can be demolished. There is absolutely no reason why it couldn't be demolished. Um, it's a very hefty building, um, pretty solid, a lot of concrete in there. And so it would be expensive to demolish, but it can be done. Um, the existing site was looked at um, for a new station in the study prior to our involvement. Um, during that study, it was found for a number of reasons not to be sufficient uh, for the size of a new station going in that location and the location itself being uh, not able to serve the full district as equally um, given its uh, proximity to the square and get in the challenge of getting over to the western side of the district. Um, the site itself is uh, small and uh, without the addition of additional properties would, would not be able to serve adequately as a fire, uh, a modern fire station. Um, there's a lot of issues with backing the trucks into the station as it exists currently, um, particularly with the traffic concerns there and um, really serving the firefighting uh, safety, has health and safety needs by getting all of the decontamination spaces and all the storage spaces that they need down on that first floor. Uh, it would be a two-story building, so it would definitely require, you know, stairs and other features 
um, that would uh, potentially be larger than what's in the current building. So just even replicating the current spaces would actually take up more room than what's there um, now. So in terms of rebuilding on the current site, there, there's a lot of impediments to it. Um, probably the biggest one being cost, um, because not only are you building a new building on the site and tearing down the existing, which is more expensive, you're also having to house the firefighters and equipment in a temporary location while you do this work. Um, we did discuss this as a committee, um, and we did you know, have some initial um, discussion about potential alternative spots for um, temporary quarters. Uh, there aren't really many or any um, that were identified during our portion of the study. And um, that became you know, a real problem for potentially having uh, a phased approach. And there really wouldn't be any effective way to build a new building, trying to keep the existing building running. Uh, so I think that probably answers the question. I don't know, Dan, if you need to jump in and add anything else, please do. No, I think that's good. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Mr. Shaw. Um, well, th this is, a, I think, a corollary um, to, to that. Um, someone is asking why um, while the other two fire stations uh, are, you know, when they're operable um, and with Quincy Fire, why would we need to um, house this other equipment and, ha and still, I guess, employ our other firefighters um, for this station? I don't know if people know that, that firefighters are, are, are assigned to certain stations. Um, but this person is asking, I guess, you know, we have mutual aid. You can't Quincy just take care of us while East Milton is being uh, built if it's in the current location. I assume with Chief Madden on, we'll let him answer. Okay, great. Hello, Chief. Hi, how are you? Thank you. Um, so it, it, that's an extended period of time. If we have an incident and, and we're overrun with, with incidents, you know, for if we're three, four, or five incidents deep, we can rely on mutual aid. Um, Quincy Fire, Boston Fire, Canton and Randolph, they, they all support us uh, tremendously. Um, but to ask them to do that for a year and a half is just an overwhelming task for the, the city of Quincy. Uh, I, I, you know, it, they would have to double their response time. Uh, double their responses, triple their responses. Um, they have their own districts to protect. Um, and, and just, you know, the city of, of Quincy wouldn't appreciate us using them um, and not paying them. So you would have to, you know, that was the big thing back in the, the 80s when Engine 4 was closed. A lot of people were saying, you know, well, why can't Canton and Boston just to respond to that? Well, you know, they will for a short period of time, but if they're not getting compensated, if their firefighters are getting beat up and tired, uh, constantly responding out of town um, to cover, it's just, it doesn't work very well. It, it, it takes that mutual aid uh, situation and ends it real quick. Um, they'll just stop responding because it's not their, their response territory if their people are starting to get beat up, uh, overused. Um, so yeah, that's it's one thing, you know, um, the, the space, around that East Milton firehouse. They, they do have a couple of firehouses over there, but they have their own districts to worry about. Quincy is a very, very busy department and uh, it's take the time out on a regular basis to, to, to cover us for a year, year and a half while we're building that firehouse. Um, it, I think it's just too much to ask for them. Chief, let me um, just add a little bit to that because I, I just want you to speak a little bit about the finely tuned nature of the fire department service in Massachusetts these days. Um, it's, it's, it is true that local fire departments serve their local community, but there's a network of response that happens throughout the region so that as fires escalate or as incidents escalate, vehicles and equipment and men come in from all directions to support local communities. So by asking one community to take on a little bit extra, you're actually affecting dozens of communities in the area because they the ability of the network to support, you know, to, to support a, an incident has been lessened. And as budgets have tightened, that network has gotten stretched and stretched. So it is, it is a concern. 
A- absolutely. And, and, you know, to, to select board, um, we do have a, a, an update of our memorandum of agreement to um, be a part of Metro Fire uh, coming up. Um, and Metro Fire is all the cities and towns inside of 128. And it's, it's just that. It's a mutual aid agreement. If, if um, Quincy has a significant fire and all their apparatus is, is, is busy at that fire, we'll go over there and cover their stations and, and protect uh, the people of the, of the city of Quincy during that fire. And if need be, we will respond to that fire. Same thing here. Um, the, one of the last fires we had was over on Washington Street and Quincy came. Uh, our other two apparatus, so engine four, which is on the west side, and engine one were both tied up at the time. So that left just engine two responding to a fire. Um, and luckily, Quincy re- responded with us. And there was a it was a good basement fire and Quincy was right behind with us. So yeah, we rely on them, but it's, it's mutual. It's, you know, it, it's give and take, you know, we cover them when, when they're busy and they cover us when, when, when we're busy. So, uh, and, and you're right. It, you know, one of the things that a few years ago, um, you know, with budget cuts, you know, a lot of cities and towns stopped going to cover firehouses. So they weren't, you know, if they need, if you need us, you know, come, we'll call you call us and we'll come when you need us. Um, rather than manning the stations, but now we're back to manning the stations. Uh, you know, well, you have some frontline apparatus just to cover the cities during during uh, fires. So that that network is is extensive. It it, it runs the entire state. There's uh, it, it is very important to to how fire departments operate. Um, just because we wouldn't have the manpower to put out uh, a significant fire uh, in, in the town of Milton. Uh, so we rely on our mutual aid partners uh, a great deal. Thank you, Chief. Mr. Walsh. Oh, you're, you're muted. muted, Mr. Walsh. Apologize. I apologize. Can you hear me now? I thought I unmuted. Yeah. Another key point that it, 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 it may get overlooked very quickly. It's interesting. We are already concerned when we look at it holistically, the East Milton Fire District. We are already concerned that the current East Milton Fire Station doesn't get around to the 75% of its district on the Milton side uh, as quickly as it probably should. I can guarantee you that the East, the, if the Quincy Fire Department has come in, that 75% of the East Milton Fire District that's on the Milton side, there there is gonna be a lot of those locations they would not possibly make within that 90% within the four minutes. And we're talking about real lives and real tragedies here. And, you know, it's, it's, if it's the mutual aid thing is for quick emergencies, occasional things, if we're talking for a year and a half and the station already, uh, it responds to about three calls per day, uh, you're talking a thousand times in a year. And I can guarantee you within those thousand calls, we're going to start missing them within the required times. And it's going to mean, you know, it real consequences. So I just wanted to add that. Thank you. Um, now we'll move on to 334 Edge Hill Road. It's the current location of the Milton Arts Center. Um, so someone's asking about what the criticism was at the 2017 town meeting. Um, so I, I don't know, Mr. Walsh, maybe you could... I think you've already alluded to to some of it. I could just do a brief summary. That they they uh, the there are there's a, there's a street in behind a very narrow street in behind that location with a lot of houses in that in that neighborhood. Uh, the in the in the neighborhood meetings there was a lot of resistance to the the concept of now that station that a fire station is going to be there already in a crowded location. I can tell you some of the questions, it wasn't as much at the town meeting, but that we've faced ourselves. If you were to put it at that location, the fire truck has to enter out onto Edge Hill Road. And right now, it, and that's, and it end, it's a very narrow Edge Hill Road uh, because there's a, there's a commercial building directly across the street. And so it can only go right and it's a blind corner of traffic that comes around the East Milton Post Office. It's just not ideal. They can only go right. It's a narrow street. If they have to go then back over to the Quincy side, they go around that jackrabbit building 
uh, take another hard turn and then try to, and then traverse across that thing. So there were some concerns expressed, not as much probably at, at that town meeting, uh, but there just was, you know, a lot, a lot of the residents that had been highlighted that this was under consideration by the Biospace Needs Committee, uh, just were well represented by their town meeting members expressing uh, opposition to that not being a great spot. And oh, also to displacing what they thought was a valuable service to the community in the Milton Art Center. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. I, I also want to note that um, you know, past boards have um, said that they were not um, in favor of making that parcel um, available for a fire station building project. It has the East Milton Library on it, which is, um, you know, a, a beloved community asset, um, if not historic building. Um, so, you know, that the building alone, I, I think, uh, it is an asset that people have expressed an interest in maintaining, and um, you know, for for other reasons. So, if if we were to do that, the, this board would really have to, um, you know, take that debate up again. If if we were um, going to to say we were making that available, um, so um, I, I think uh, I think we've covered the the Milton Arts Center. Somebody asked about uh, their mission, um, and it it's not it's not necessarily the Milton Arts Center mission uh, that that this the site's not being chosen for. Um, Linda, can I just add something on the Art Center? Um, I just wanted absolutely. to. Read reiterate that um, while we we have to remember that the fire station needs committee studied it and came up with some uh, conceptual plans for it. So we there was a lot of due diligence that was done before our committee. We, we took that and we did reevaluate it. And then additionally, um, once we got the matrix down to the art center being a potential option, uh, we did additional due diligence and Jeff and his team from context uh, evaluated it additionally. So um, I don't want it to be portrayed that um, we didn't focus on it or we didn't do additional due diligence. Um, we certainly did through the matrix. We also did through um, some conceptual design plans on how a station would uh, potentially look uh, at that location. So it was evaluated further. Um, and I, I, I'm, uh, I, I'm pretty sure that if um, a better option, as you look at the matrix, it was the second best option. Um, I think our, if we didn't have a better option, our committee would have brought that back to the select board to have further discussion on that um, would have probably been the direction. So it's not that we didn't uh, evaluate it. It's not that we didn't consider it. Uh, it. It's just that a lot of the due diligence was already done prior to our committee. Um, so we didn't seem to focus on it as much in our meetings. Thank you. Um, the next location um, is Center and Brook Road. Um, so uh, I, I think Brian Walsh uh, did cover that. That's the cemetery parcel. Um, and I, I, I was surprised that the cemetery trustees were will, might be willing to, to give that up. But, um, but it seems that, that you did um, analyze that parcel and, um, and it, it didn't work. Um, do you want to just sum up again why? Yeah, I, I, thank you. The, the, the thing, we were looking at it as one of two parcels to cover the whole town, um, to just be an East Milton location, uh, we have some other concerns that are similar to why it didn't work as one of two parcels. And that is the response time, making it from that location to the entire East Milton district. Uh, I see that, is that, who's, who's got this, Dan, up on the? Yeah, I was just gonna share that, um, you had alluded this to this earlier, Brian, this red line is really the um, area that our third party um, who ran a run runtime analysis said to focus to maintain the East Milton Fire District said just to keep it within the, uh, this area. Um, as you can see, um, the East Milton Fire District, and I do have that, I think it, I have it on this other slide. So this is the East Milton Fire, oops, fire District, and this is the location we're talking about today. Um, you can see how when you start to pull it too far to the west, um, you have this densely populated area over here to the right. 
um, that, you know, really neglects the coverage. So um, that's, you can see how far over it comes. This is Brook here uh, and center here. It actually puts you on the west side of the entire district. So every time the fire department would respond to a call, they would be going one direction. And that's really not what you want. You want it centrally located. Uh, and you can kind of see that in these other, um, in this slide here, how you have Atherton at this yellow star centrally located in its district and headquarters centrally located in its district. So um, that's that was really why that cemetery location didn't work. And then we didn't touch on it earlier, but we, we even evaluated the DPW uh, knowing that they had so much land. Um, as you can see, it's just so close to headquarters, it just wouldn't make sense. Thank you. Um, okay, so now we're on to uh, 432 Adams Street, the, the uh, parcel next to the St. Agatha's uh, Rectory. So um, it says, why is the fire station building committee reluctant to complete a neighborhood impact study on relocating the East Milton Fire Station to this site? So Melinda, um, I, I, I'm going to try to answer this question, but I, I, if whoever asked it wouldn't mind if I don't answer it correctly following up, because I'm not 100% sure um, exactly the question with neighborhood impact study. Um, but as Jeff mentioned earlier, um, you know, one of the key uh, items on the neighbor uh, on the matrix was neighborhood impact. It is something that we did evaluate. Um, it's something that we spent a lot of time on because we knew, you know, looking at East Milton and that area that the fire station was going to need to be relocated to. Uh, it's all residential for the most part. We have very little commercial, as everybody knows, and we knew there was a high probability that it was going to end up in a residential neighborhood. Um, and that's really one of the reasons, you know, one of the going way back when we hired uh, Jeff and his team as an architect, it's something that we really put a lot of weight with was Jeff has experience in densely populated uh, neighborhoods uh, for fire stations. He relocated uh, two Belmont stations um, from a similar town center, uh, like e the existing East Milton station and pulled it out of the downtown and put it on the edge of a residential district. Uh, he's worked in Arlington. So uh, we felt really comfortable with that skill set that he was going to bring to the table and be able to provide that feedback. So we certainly have taken into consider the neighborhood. Um, if, if there's some sort of other study or impact that you're asking us to do, I don't think we're reluctant to do it. Um, I just think there may be a communication barrier that we either haven't done something or I haven't communicated something well. So um, I, I would certainly ask, um, use the Q&A function or the chat function, Melinda, are one of those available? Right. Well, I think what, what we'll do is we're, we're just about to the end of that section. And, and if it didn't get answered, that person can raise their hand. But I, I'd like to ask a follow up question about that. You know, it was in the matrix and maybe um, maybe you or or Mr. Shaw could um, just speak a little bit about what's meant by neighborhood impact, sort of what kind of what kind of features are, are looked at or criteria are considered. Jeff, could you opine? Sure. So um, the, as Dan alluded to, um, the way we look at neighborhood impact uh, might be might be a little different possibly than, than people that live in the neighborhoods because our experience with fire stations, because we, we've seen this time in and time out, um, anytime we try to relocate a fire station away from a neighborhood, there's a general outcry not to. Um, so we do see fire stations a little bit differently. We see them as positive neighbors typically. And so um, generally when we're looking at a neighborhood, it's less about um, disrupting a residential fabric, a residential feel with a fire station. And it's more about how the function of the fire station impact sort of the life of the neighborhood. Um, starting primarily with what street is it located on? Is it on a major road or is it sort of in the middle of quiet residential streets. Um, so in the case of this particular site, locating it right on Adams is a major road. And knowing that the way the fire department operates its vehicles, we also look at where is the trucks likely to go once it leaves that station. They almost always, unless there's a, a disruption so severe that they can't cross it, would take um, major roads because you can travel faster on them. You can get to the, the incident faster and that's all about time when you're um, you know, responding to emergencies. 
They would not take uh, narrower streets. They would not take lower speed streets. Um, they're careful drivers. They're going to automatically go slower when they're in those types of environments. So speed is important. We want to make sure that they're on the major roads. So typically we would look at putting the stations at the edge of a neighborhood. Um, those are some of the features we looked at here. Um, the building itself, we also look at, you know, how much would the building itself seem out of character with the neighborhood, like the size of it, the massing of it, the scale. Um, and if you think about Atherton Station there, you know, it really fits in well with this neighborhood. And we were thinking the same for East Milton. It's a one base station, fairly compact, um, would fit in well with some of the buildings on Adams Street. It wouldn't necessarily be exactly the same size as a house, which is probably good that it's not next to a house, but it is next to larger buildings like the rectory, uh, commercial properties, the church. So there is a, a feel on that street already that can support um, the size of building that it is. Uh, I, I, there's probably others, but I don't want to tie us up getting into the, the nitty gritty. Yeah, no, that, that, that was helpful. Thank you. Um, and um, I, I think that there's also, um, Dan, an impression that St. Agatha's um, will become a dead end. So Yeah, so um, I can, I can yeah. share that again. Um, so the, I have a slide right, that it, will right, share because the and, Right. It, it says uh, that, that all the traffic would be forced down Woodworth Court and onto Libby Road. Um, so. Yep. So this is. So this was a slide that was put together to show how the traffic patterns would change. Um, this is, you know, looking at the residential neighborhood, you know, kind of zoomed out. Um, and then this is zooming in a little bit, just focusing on Woodward, Libby. And the real change you see here is Libby Road stays a one way going this way. Woodward Court is um, currently a two way this way, uh, going left and right on the screen. Uh, and then there's this um, uh, access road that comes from the back of Woodward Court, St. Agatha's right in this corner that flows down to Adam Street. Um, currently it comes in on an angle um, and there's a stop sign there. This would be formalized and straightened out uh, with Adam Street. Uh, we'd be able to, you know, incorporate pedestrian walkways and things like that, and you know, really formalize this. Um, this roadway really was a driveway that's converted, I would say, into a roadway more um, over the time. So it would be able to be engineered and formalized. So um, none of the current uh, routes would be changing; they would just be shifting slightly and formalized. Right, but it's just that one road. Correct. Oh, that's, that uh, it would be that, what I it's, it's, I would call it. Um, I guess Saint Agatha's extension. Maybe I don't know. It's uh, I don't think it's yeah. technically Saint Agatha's Road, um, but it would be straightened out and put next to closer to the rectory. Uh, and then uh, currently, it's you know slated to be a um, two way in and out. Right, and the fire station would not be using it. So. Correct. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Okay, so I'm sorry, just let me make one note. Um, well, um, great, thank you. Um, so at this point, I would like to um, just We'll take a few minutes to see if there are any additional questions on locations. And I already see a hand up. Um, that's great. Let me just say that for people with computers, um, you can toggle, you can go down to the bottom of your screen and and um, and thank you, Hillary, and um, use the raise hand feature. But for uh, those of us who are on the phone today, um, if you press star nine um, to raise your hand and then we can um, acknowledge you and then you can press star six to toggle on and off. So I just have to bring my participants back, back up. And um, so uh, Marty Shields, if you would, um, would like to speak and if you could just tell us your name and address, um, 
And, and, sure. Uh, can, can you yeah. hear me? Yes. Thank you. Okay, great. Uh, my name is Marty Shields. I live at 26 St. Agatha Road. So uh, I was, I was, you know, very concerned about the uh, the exit um, from St. Agatha Road. I, I did ask the question the other night at Kathleen's house, you know, does this turn St. Agatha Road essentially into a, a one-way street? Um, and I wanted to ask, you know, has anybody gone down Woodward Court, you know, with, with two, you know, two vehicles going in opposite directions and just kind of measured whether or not that's feasible um, the whole way down that street? And also, is either Woodward Court or uh, Libby Road currently a, a, a private way? And would that be changing in the, in the plans that you have? Um, Mr. Clark, I don't know if you can answer any of those questions, but... Um. I, I can. So it's um, the arrows currently show Woodward Court as two directions because that's what it currently is. Um, that's there, it's not designated a one way, um, in either direction. So that is to show what's existing there. Uh, it doesn't mean that that couldn't change. Um, and yes, it is a private way. Um, so I think that's probably why it's designated officially two way is because it's considered to be a private way. Um, so that's that we were looking to just maintain what's there. Um, this would certainly, uh, be an opportunity uh, if the neighborhood felt that there was um, a change that needed to be made, whether it needed to be uh, a do not enter sign or turned into a one way, this would be, I think, a good opportunity for a project to be able to um, take on something like that. I hope that answers both of your questions. It does. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, and next we have um, Allison and Brian, if you could just um, share your name and your address and um, ask your question or um, make your statement. I don't know if you're unmuted. Madam Chair, Allison and Brian are using an older version of Zoom and I need to promote them. So just one moment. Got it. Okay, thank you. Hello and welcome. Hi. Um, we, we were listening along. One thing that was mentioned was that Libby Road is a one-way. It is not a one-way. Uh, I didn't hear that that was a one-way. One uh, Daniel Clark mentioned that it was a one-way. It oh. does have a do not enter sign, it, um, but, but it is you not can, a one direction. If road. you're coming from, is it St. Agatha's? Yep. You okay. can go both ways on it. Okay. Well, so, so, sorry, I, I, I did miss speak. I meant to say that it's one way you can't enter from the other side of Libby from um, you can't enter off of Squantum Street. I think it I think it may be a good thing to look into in making it a one way. Um, as some I live on Libby Road, so uh, but um, that would I just wanted to quickly comment you, you I Dan you've been great uh, but you mentioned it was a one way I just wanted to say no, okay. thank, thanks for the correction. Yes. Right. So if you if you actually want to send um, one of us an email, Dan or myself, I, 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 I'm happy to walk you a bit through the process if you want to talk to the traffic commission um, because they, they, they could help you. So and great. is that something that could be addressed? I know we mentioned um, at one of the other meetings the exit from St. Agatha's in the back there, and I can't remember the street that, um, that I think it goes Senate to St. Agatha's Road. Road. Um, you know, we were talking about how that might increase traffic patterns within the neighborhood if parishioners or um, school members are leaving St. Ag out oh, that way to, um, is there a way that we could, like in the negotiation process, make that not an exit, that they would have to exit out of that main road rather than having an influx of cars into the neighborhood? Yeah, I, I think that's um, uh, that's something that, Dan and Brian um, can probably talk to about the process because I know that that the fire station building committee um, has a, a good way to work with neighborhoods in um, in the the real design phase, which we haven't quite arrived at yet. So, um, so if the two of you would like to say something about that, um, that uh, that there would there would be ways for the, the neighborhood. We're, we're going to cover that later, but that seems to be a design phase sort of discussion. 
Did, is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank yeah. you. Great. Thank you. Yeah, we'll definitely hit on that. And if we don't, definitely, you know, jump back on and we'll try to answer your question better. Right. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, and next we have Allison McGrath. If you could um, give us your address and ask your question, please. Sure. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you so much and for this opportunity. So I'm Allison McGrath and I'm at 95 St. Agatha Road. And so I would just agree and, and share concerns just around the traffic pattern. And I would love, I, Dan, Dan, when you shared your screen, I would just love to see that again and better understand um, the road that you were talking about. I, I have to say, I, I have been home um, previously a little bit more due to COVID and thank you. Um, I have watched the drop off and the pickup at St. Agatha School. And while we love them dearly, the, the traffic during pickup and drop off is, um, I would say, pretty significant. And the cars will line up around the street, around, I'm on the, um, like the, I'm on a bend um, and backing out of my house in the morning can be a challenge and it is a two way street, but um, I, it, it's, it's, it's tricky, especially if you have a car parked on the side of the road or something like that. So I just, I, I, I mentioned that the um, being concerned about the traffic pattern, especially at pickup and drop off at the school. Um, so I guess I would just love to hear a little bit more and understand a little bit more about the, the traffic pattern. Um, yep. So yeah, the, it's, that's kind of a tough one. Um, because this is something that we also worked with on, um, uh, headquarters, which is, you know, we were the first project going in at headquarters and we're a small portion of the big picture. Uh, and so what we can actually accomplish within that big picture is, is, is a little bit limited to our project. So, um, you know, what I was trying to show with this is, you know, how the traffic flow on St. Agatha's would stay the same and you would still have those options on St. Agatha's to then be able to get to Adam Street by the rectory that Woodward Court would be maintained, Libby Court would be. Um, but we, as I mentioned earlier, we certain ha certainly have some opportunities to be able to have impacts um, that could help the neighborhood on a smaller scale. I'm not exactly sure what all of those might be and which ones we necessarily could tackle as part of this project, um, but there's opportunity still. Um, I think there's opportunity outside of our project. If we identify something that would be good that our project can't quite tackle, I think there's other avenues. Melinda had, Ms. Uh, Collins had mentioned um, the traffic commission as an opportunity. Um, certainly as part of this project, I hope to be, you know, that our process would be a good working dialogue with St. Agatha's, the neighborhoods, the abutters, and, you know, maybe there's other opportunities there. So it's something that we'll certainly take into consideration. Um, you know, we spent a lot of time working with the Town Center Neighborhood Association um, and really reworking our designs um, to understand their impacts the best we could. Uh, I'm sure there were things that were outside of our project that were, you know, that they would have loved to seen us do, but um, they really kind of understood and worked with us where we're, we're bound. But I think it also gave them an opportunity. They engaged with us and um, they really were able to engage in the in the entire town government process and uh, mm -hmm. were able to go from working with us to working with Master Planning Implementation Committee, which is also looking at the space. So I think that's there's a conduit there, which I think would be very helpful uh, for trying to rework or, or fix some of the what I would call existing conditions. Mm -hmm. I hope I hope that answers your question. Yes, thank you so much. Great. Yeah, I think that's a great way of putting it, Dan. That um, that your your project really is a small piece um, of what's happening there, um, but uh, but it's a good conduit to um, to the other uh, sort of town uh, entities that can help, like the traffic commission. And, um, so um, great. Yeah. Uh, I don't see any other hands for location. Well. No, now we have more hands for location. Okay. Um, so Jack Corrigan, if you could give us your address. Hello, this is this is Jack Corrigan. I'm from 15 Ellsworth Road. 
Welcome. In, thank you, uh, first of all, for, for doing this meeting tonight. Um, very helpful. Um, my question uh, in regards to location kind of goes back to the, uh, the decision matrix and particularly the, the cost line. Um, so my question was, was why is the art center um, assigned a red dot on that cost line, whereas uh, the St. Agatha's property is assigned a yellow dot? Um, especially when St. Agatha's, um, you know, we'd have to negotiate the lease with and the town owns the Milton Art Center land. I guess my question is, wouldn't the cost of the St. Agatha's lease exceed that of uh, raising the, the art center and relocating it to the existing fire station? Thank you. So uh, I'll, I'll take a first pass at that. Um, one, one of the components to that, uh, and I'll kind of touch on the second piece of it, which is um, that matrix was for the building and the location. We really didn't, because our funding mechanism wasn't going to acquire the land, and that is something being taken up by the select board um, outside of our committee funding mechanism, we really set that aside. Uh, and really thought it was more in the select board's purview to be able to evaluate that piece. Um, certainly if we brought that to them uh, and they said that fiscally it's it's not achievable, um, we would certainly go back to the drawing board. But we really felt like our committee uh, shouldn't be making the decision on that land purchase cost, knowing that um, there's so many unknowns with you know offsetting costs from another station. So that's, that, that's all stuff that our mine was really the jurisdiction of the select board. So we really left that component out of it um, and really focused on the, the building part. Um, Jeff, do you have anything to add to that, the two dots? No, that, that's that's a good description of what we did. Just to yeah. follow up on that. So what did, I guess, your cost analysis entail? Because I think earlier in the meeting, you did mention that kind of regardless of the location, the cost of the actual building would be the same. So wouldn't that lead to really costs being kind of the same across the board there within the decision matrix? Mr. Walsh? Yeah, I'd like to take a shot because this can get confusing. The the What we just went to in uh, to get to town meeting for was funding for the construction. That's in its, it, it, it we have a, a really attractive mechanism because of the wisdom of a select board uh, some years back that said, look, you know, the funding mechanism will allow you to, to do construction costs as the, as the cost for the prior construction of the schools and the library projects that decline, you can use that. So what we were pursuing is the cost of the funding to build the stations. We have said many times, and it might be confusing, that yeah, we know that we know the East Milton building that we want to build, and that cost is essentially the cost, what, no matter what site you build it on. Are there other ancillary costs, as Dan mentioned, if you had to purchase a piece of land? Yes, but that also legally cannot be tied up in the funding that we requested, and wouldn't be even logically. We'd go, that's a that's a that's a uh, responsibility of the select board. And I'd also just point out that if we move the East Milton station to another location, um, there is a cost to acquire property, but now there's an asset to the town, the site that we've vacated, that could provide an offsetting value. Uh, so I don't know if I helped or not, I, I tried to. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna add two things to uh, help answer that question, Mr. Corrigan. So the two two of the components, you know, taking the buildings out of them because they're pretty equal. One of the things that drove that um, from a yellow closer to a red, um, and maybe it needed to be orange. Uh, it, you know, it's a little subjective, but um, one of the detractors to the um, site at the Milton Art Center location uh, is we'd have to demolish a building, and there's cost associated with that. Um, and additionally, the topography of the land, it slopes up. That existing building sits up pretty high from the street. You kind of walk up to it. We'd have to lower that and regrade the entire site. And we'd probably be with the abutters. Uh, we may not have the room to slope it. So we'd probably do some retaining walls down the side. Um, so it, it has a, a higher site package cost uh, for those items, which the other one didn't. So that's why there's kind of that subjective. There's more cost associated to that. So. But, but wouldn't but but wouldn't that kind of fall into kind of the the I guess the 
or the responsibility or the analysis of the select board. Um, because I think, as, as Mr. Walsh said, isn't that considered kind of ancillary costs that are, you know, kind of the select board's responsibility to analyze rather than yours? No, the only the only thing that's outside of the our funding and our purview is um, the actual purchase and acquisition of any land. Um, preparing the whole site, demolishing a building would be cost uh, burdened on our project. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and uh, there's a Powers, if you could give us your name and your address and ask your question, please. Sure. Thank you, Melinda. It's Kathleen Powers. Kathleen. We're, at, uh, we're at 8 Governors Road. So if, Dan, if you don't mind putting your traffic slide up again or your way the traffic goes, that would be great. The traffic pattern. So I'm just going to go back to, I don't know if you call it a neighborhood impact study. I don't know if you call it a traffic study. I don't know what you call it. But let me give you the perspective from Governor's Road. If you put, if you stand right in the middle of Adams Street from where that fire station is going to be, it is like overstimulation. So you've got, you've already heard about the drop off and pick up from St. Agatha. You have not heard about the 55 mile an hour coming down from Center Street or the other side of Adams Street. The no egress up, um, is it reservation Otis. and Otis. The, you know, Governor's Road has now become a funnel anytime there is pressure on traffic in that area, right? So I can completely empathize with the St. Agatha Road people in terms of when there's pressure from the school or the liturgical activities or when it was pre-COVID bingo or the Friends of Bill Wilson or the many things that go on seven days a week at St. Agatha. We are active parishioners there. I am a former parent there. I'm well aware that goes on in Saint Ag at St. Agatha. It is a busy and vibrant parish and we are grateful for it, but it does pressure that whole Adams Street corridor. The kids walking across the side, kids walking across the uh, crosswalk, God bless Marsha. So there's a lot of, there's, there's just a lot that goes on in this area and to put the fire station there, it's not about the three employees showing up on the two two different shifts. It's not about the no visitors to the fire station. It's all of that that goes on during any hour of the day and the call comes. And I hear what you say, you know, all right, you've got to pull over and you've got to, there's nowhere to pull over, right? So that, and it, then the pressure upon the side streets or the governor's road, the row street, whatever you want to call it, becomes really very unsafe and impassable. In addition, the St. Agatha Road egress right now, and correct me if I'm wrong, I believe that road is owned by the, the St. Agatha and the egress is at the privilege or the pleasure of the pastor. There used to be a gate there or a chain there. Father Casey probably let it down and Father Pilardi's probably okay with it, but you move it like this, I'm not sure he's gonna be okay with it because that is the way that the school, the parents, Depart, and if you guys have ever watched a St. Agatha mother try and get their kids from home, you'd be horrified. I just want you to know. So I cannot impress upon you that before you make a decision, before this becomes an absolute permanent situation on a piece of leased land, that there is a real look at the impact, call it what you will, on these 50 homes, 50 homes. And, you know, I have to say, if if this if this isn't enough, if the opposition at the Milton Art Center wasn't strong enough, I don't know what else we have to do. So I would really just encourage going back to that and really taking a real look at what it will do to this to this neighborhood and and the safety concerns I have. I really do. So uh, again, I we need some clarification on the traffic pattern. It is Dan. I hear you. It is. You know, when you talk about getting involved in the planning thing, because we have the planning committee, because we have to adjust things that currently exist, it exists the way it is now. We have to work within it because God knows that'll take 10 years. So I just would encourage a, a real look at that. So I, I appreciate that. Um, I, I think it's something that 
a lot, um, you know, as I, as I mentioned earlier, there's definitely some things that we can try to improve upon. Um, I do want to uh, just touch on that, um, you know, certainly, uh, you know, outside of this um, forum, you know, there's certainly opportunity to um, be able to explore um, any, any sort of impacts that we're having. I mean, we've thought about a lot of them, but certainly we can't think about everything. So I think there's an opportunity if this does go forward that, you know, you're, you do live there also. And, um, you know, I know that uh, a lot of people on our committee are familiar with the site. So I think there's an opportunity to really, um, if it goes here, to find a solution that does work. So that's that's kind of where I'm, I'm pretty confident. Um, and I, I don't know if Jeff wants to add anything additional about uh, neighborhood impact studies or anything else that you know of or you've done in the past that we could consider? Um, I mean, it, when it comes to traffic and the, I think that's probably the biggest concern that, that would be needing to be explored more um, in, in terms of adding the average runs onto the existing traffic pattern that's there. Um, you may have heard Brian mention it a while ago, but there's an average of three calls a day out of the station. So um, that's what we would have. That's essentially how we would have to treat it as to the impact of that. And um, obviously, you can't identify when those calls would happen. They happen at all times of the day and night. So um, we, we'd have to look at that. That could be done um, as part of a traffic analysis. Um, if that's the wishes of the committee, but um, that's probably the extent as to, to what we would typically do for this specific type of an issue. Obviously, the routing of streets that are well away from the site or not on the site that we're working with is, is sort of outside the purview of the team here. Um, but certainly, I echo Brian's and um, Dan's comments about working within the town structures to address systemic issues. So I, I, I would like to note, um, and I, this was going to come up later, and somebody actually sent in a question about it, but I think it, it's an appropriate time to address it. Um, the, our DPW engineering have been working with BETA, uh, that's uh, our, our engineering consultant for a project at Squantum and Adams uh, to do improvements with, you know, smart traffic signals that will tie into um, East Milton Square. As everybody, I'm sure, is well aware, there's there's uh, construction on the deck, and there'll be smart signals going in all around the square. Um, and in addition to that, um, there. Uh, there, there would there would be um, amenities for all modes of transportation, so including improved infrastructure for bicycles and pedestrians. Um, and I, I, I um, contacted Chase Berkeley, the, the DPW director, about this specifically. Um, it, you know, Beta um, and actually Howard Stein Hudson, I, I believe, have also done traffic studies in there. Um, the DPW Beta, they're they they know about the fire station project potential. Um, they're 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 not. I think they've just finished their twenty five percent design stage, um, and MassDOT is looking that over. So. Um, you know, there, there are already um, safety improvements that are, are being worked on. And um, I, I asked when they might be able to get before our board so that people could see what that 25% design looks like. And the reason they go in those quarterly 25, 50%, 75% design is that each step along the way, because all of this requires state funding, um, the, the town has to con uh, sort of commit to, to, to funding specific pieces of projects so that they go along through this state project, um, through the, the, the TIP, the Transportation um, um, uh, Investment Program. Um, so, um, so right now we're funded through the design stage. We're not funded for anything more, but but there, there is a lot of work that's been done and um, people who have their eye on, on safety, um, the DPW, the chief here, Chief Madden, he's, uh, you know, it, 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 fire doesn't mean that they don't understand all the implications of um, 
parading in different kinds of neighborhoods. Um, I, I think too, um, Jeff Shaw uh, um, has a lot of, and and the other the other um, professionals on their team have a lot of experience in areas like this. As he said, this is um, normally a location that they would look at and say it's a, it's a good location. Otherwise, um, I, I don't believe he would have said yes. Fire station building committee. This is a good place to to put a fire station. Um, but just just to just to note, the town has been doing traffic studies and um, and that work on, at Squanum and Adams for these safety improvements would would then be connected more directly with the the fire station building project. And I do understand um, uh, the the pressure um, around schools. You know, having been a parent who dropped off and picked up children and things like that. So my heart really goes out to people. Um, and, and it is wonderful to have a vibrant parish, but again, I just want to acknowledge that it's also really challenging. And so for people to, um, to think about adding something else on top of it, when they don't really have an idea of, as Jeff Shaw said, you know, what it, what it will look like and feel like, um, on a, on a day-to-day a -day basis, um, it is, is difficult. So I just thank everybody for bringing questions and for answering them. Um, so sorry, I spoke so long, um, about that, but, uh, so the, the, um, also, um, Ms. Powers had a question about the, um, that that driveway um, that uh, I, I think she was wondering if Father Polardi understood that um, the plan would be to straighten it. Um, yes, uh, sorry, I, I was I, I glanced over that. So um, as part of um, early conversations uh, with Saint Agatha's. Um, that was one of the things that they stressed to us that that road needed to be maintained and that if we were going to um, put a fire station in, that it would need to be straightened um, and that it would have to be maintained as two-way. Um, so um, I, I don't, I can't speak, um, and I don't know if um, Mr. Wallace could speak to it, is if we're taking that on as a project, if it formally becomes, and I think I mentioned this earlier about the formalization of that road, um, I did talk to uh, DPW director about this when uh, we first evaluated the land because, as I had mentioned, um, in the back uh, off of the corner of St. Agatha's Woodwards, it's not an actual curb cut. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been a piece of asphalt. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, Mr. Berkeley had mentioned that there, he saw no reason why it couldn't become an official curb cut. And so that's what I was talking about. If we're going to do this, it could formalize, uh, finally be formalized in a, as an official um, road. So I think there's some more uh, due diligence to be done on that and more, but it, it did seem um, like it's possible. And, you know, it is something that um, everybody was aware of um, between the town and St. Agatha's. Thank you. Um, I want to note that it's getting on to 830 and we actually covered safety um, already our safety, safety questions. But um, if, if, uh, if, I'll take one more question on, on location. And if people have other questions, they can perhaps contact us directly. Um, so uh, it is uh, David Finocchio, uh, if you have a location question. I do. Thank you. And thanks, everybody. I know it's getting late here. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah. First, again, I appreciate everybody taking the Great democratic process here, so so much appreciated. Um, just in the context, again, of what's best for the town in this question, I mentioned that there's due, due diligence was done for the, the Arts Center. And I guess if you could just elaborate a little bit more on due diligence was done. And in, in particular, if um, you're, we're about to enter any kind of a lease, shouldn't we do the same level, if not more, due diligence with the, you know, traffic studies, you know, environmental impact, things like that, have they been done before we get into to a, um, a lease? And what I mean by that is, you know, I know traffic studies have been done, and I think those probably had been done before it was envisioned that a fire station would be here. So I think the, the nuance is, 
that there's existing traffic that has been thought about, but I don't know that it's been thought about the firemen and firewomen um, when the traffic study hasn't been done. You know, for, for they don't want to be sitting in a fire truck with a funeral lined up and panicking that they can't get out or they got to run. So I, I just, I guess I wonder if that hasn't been done, should it be done? And, and just for consideration to, to really, again, from the Milton Art Center site, what drove that away from the due diligence? And should we, should we take it to the same to any type of lease agreement? Thank you. Um, so I, I, I think, uh, I, I think we've covered the, uh, the art center quite a bit. And, um, if you're, I, I would like to, to, to jump to then, uh, 432 Adams street, the, the due diligence. So I, I um, at Dan, would you, would you like to cover this or would you like me to cover sure. it? Um, I'm happy to cover it. So, um, you know, with regard to a traffic study, you know, we kind of mentioned this earlier, it really rarely is done with a fire station project, but it doesn't mean that um, we're not going to take into consideration traffic. So uh, one of the big traffic impacts that we're going to under, uh, really analyze is um, the signalization and the clearing of traffic and what's needed. Um, so the big study that will probably, the big focal point related to traffic and traffic study is a very broad term within the civil engineering world, I would say um, exactly what you're looking at. But uh, one of the big focal points will be um, how exactly when the fire department needs to respond. Um, you know, one of the clear, easy things is that when they respond, they'll have um, like a garage door open or a button that can turn the lights red at Squanum and down in the square uh, to halt traffic. Um, additionally, you'll see a lot in more um, densely populated neighborhoods, um, uh, emergency lights that can go on outside the station so that if they're pulling in or coming back, um, they can turn that red to stop traffic directly in front of the station. So th that's that's probably the focal point of what really um, needs to be understood. Um, environmental impact study, we did evaluate that. There's no wetlands or habitat um, on or, or near the site that would have a detrimental impact. Um, certainly there's um, certain standards uh, that we're going to be constructing to, um, you know, with permeability and things like that and site drainage and retainage of um, stormwater runoff and things like that. Those are across the board for any station we do, they're, they're part of our owner's project requirements um, for the project. And then there's, you know, there's additionally building code requirements and mass amendments to the building codes that really stipulate a lot of those things. Um, hazardous materials, um, you know, aren't something that we have to really be concerned about here because the fire stations don't store hazardous materials. Um, and that's actually been the huge focal point of these fire stations projects is um, when the fire department comes back and they do have potential contaminants or hazardous materials on them, um, we want them to be able to operate in a station where they come back on their trucks and they go and they flow through and they decontaminate from a hot zone to a cool zone. And they're able to get their gear off and keep it in one space in the unit. And they have specialized, very specialized washers and dryers and what look like dishwashers. Um, to clean their gear, and that water doesn't just go into um, the storm. It gets it gets treated, and then it gets disposed of properly. So there's really not hazardous materials um, from that standpoint. The fire trucks um, have certain, you know, cleaning processes and solvents, and those, you know, um, uh, all are contained uh, and treated before going off. And then uh, knowing that the climate's changing, uh, we did evaluate flood zone mitigation and resiliency. Uh, the, the site's not in a flood zone for the 100 year. Uh, it actually ends to the west of Libby Road. So um, we're, we're confident that in 100 years from now, um, with climate change, that this operate this fire department would be able to operate. So um, those are probably some of the bigger points to focus on. Um, I don't know, if, Jeff, if you want to add anything additionally. No, you went right down the list. So you got it. Okay. Thank you. Um, I, I, uh, Mr. Finocchio, if you want more detail um, on, on, on the, the uh, um, 
Milton Art Center site, you know, feel free to to email um, Dan Clark or myself. Um, we it, we just don't have time, I think, to go into the level of detail that we seem to be looking for. Um, I would also, oh, of course, I would also like to note that um, that uh, as when we are, are go into completing the transaction or to to um, to negotiating, there's extra due diligence that's done um, in that process. Um, and I'll talk about that when we get to transaction. Um, but Chief Madden, I, I did hear a, a, a concern that um, the fire department may have difficulty um, sort of maneuvering if there's a funeral. I, I, I think that maybe you, you could speak best to, to that. Yeah, that's that's um, a funeral is one of the toughest things for us when we're responding. And that's you know, at any church. And we deal with it at headquarters, you know, the, the, the central fire station on, our, on a regular basis with the two churches on either side. Um, we're very respectful of the family. We, we're very respectful. Um, we understand what's, what's going on uh, and we have ways around it, you know whether it's using the air horns or the, the sirens, um, you know, it would be minimal with it. Um, if we have to take an alternate alternative route, if say, if we're going towards say Emerson road it, it, on the east side, and we have to go from that Adam street station, well, instead of taking the left out of the firehouse, maybe we'll take a right and go to Squanum street and go the back side of it. Um, just to kind of avoid that. Um, the, the people that, that work at that station will already do, uh, they know the, the East Milton Square better than than anybody. They they know how to maneuver the, through traffic. Um, like I said before, to to this this you know the meeting uh, a couple of weeks ago last week, um, all of our drivers, everyone who drives, has to have a year on the department before they're allowed to get behind the wheel. Uh, they're held accountable by on their own license. Um, so they're very very careful. We can manage our way through um, any kind of traffic situation. Uh, we, we do it on a regular basis, trying to get on 93 North uh, through a multiple multi car multi car motor vehicle accident. Four lanes of traffic stopped. We get through. We, we do. Uh, they're all very, you know, we're, we're very cognizant of, you know, if we get into an accident or whatever, we can't do the job that we're assigned to do. So uh, you have to get there first. So you know, the speed we don't speed. We're not allowed to speed. Um, we stop at all stop signs. Um, and, and, you know, and, and we can work that out with the church, you know, if, if they, you know, the, the funeral homes are great. Uh, a lot of people that work for the funeral homes are former firefighters. We have several in our department that work funerals. And if they see us coming out, I'm sure they'll stop traffic, uh, you know, stop the, the funeral just for a second, hold it up for a second, let us go by. And then they can continue on with, with the services, uh, you know, getting to the, the cemetery or, or getting into the church. Um, so we're very respectful of that. And, and, and that's something that will be uh, strongly on our minds, you know, uh, if if we do come out of that station. Thank you very much, Chief. Um, Dan? Yeah, and uh, just something I uh, neglected to mention is, you know, in evaluating this, um, you know, we analyzed all the responses that the fire department had for the previous five years. That was from, that was undertaken in 2019. So it was fiscal year, 2018, so like the first half of 2019 going five years back, we analyzed where all of those calls were for the, for all the stations um, to understand where they were going. That That's really what helped us with that runtime analysis. I did go back and look um, because it was something that we looked at when talking about relocating the station. And Brian mentioned that 75% of the calls are on the west side of the deck. Um, something else we evaluated was on from those main thoroughfares that uh, we talked about um, through the East Milton District, Approximately 45% of the calls that the East Milton Fire District responds to today goes down Adam Street's past goes down Adam Street past the St. Agatha's Rectory. So it's something that they've they've been doing already. Almost half their calls uh, are going in that neighborhood. Um, so it, it's something to take into consideration. Something that we evaluated that uh, while the fire department's house is not or fire station is not there, um, they are there. Uh, within that part of the community. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you very much. Um, so I, since we are uh, almost at quarter to nine, I think we'll finish up the questions um, and uh, uh, that we've already received all of them and because um, there are just a few more. And uh, and then if there are some questions, uh, we'll, we'll, um, uh, we'll, we'll see if we, we can take those too. 
So <clears throat> moving on to design and construction, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, in the next few years, uh, some this uh, this person um, says the construction industry is um, uh, going to be anticipating a very competitive market resulting from decreases in commercial construction sectors. Um, so uh, isn't it better to um, break off the East Milton portion of the project and save it? Um, so uh, I, I think this person is saying that it would serve two purposes, give the select board and fire station building committee time to work out details for the East Milton location um, and allow the other two um, stations to start right away. And um, <clears throat> excuse me. So Dan, if you might talk to what, what we expect in the construction industry. So I'm gonna uh, let Jeff um, chime in on this first and then I will add uh, my thoughts as needed. Okay. Sure. Yes. Yeah, well, if I knew what to predict in the construction market, I'd be doing a different job, but um, I think we all would if we could predict the future. But I, in general, what we expect and what our estimators have been expecting is an annual 4% increase in the construction pricing. And that's what we're sort of generally predicting. Um, the market, construction market, really hasn't gone down at all. Um, for those that pay attention and work in the construction industry, you, you'll note that even throughout the pandemic, um, there was high, high demand for contractors. Um, pricing did slow down for a bit when there was an un, uh, when there was some uncertainty as to future orders, future buildings coming online. But it has all pretty much come back at this point, uh, or very close to it. Um, public pricing is different from private contracting in um, the state of Massachusetts. We have prevailing wages, and those are um, negotiated and set in place uh, long before a project starts. So um, a lot of the pricing is sort of baked in, um, and we've been anticipating it in the estimating that we've been doing for the project. So I would say that, um, that there probably isn't any ad advantages to the town in waiting. And the other thing I would say is the way the building committee has packaged this project I think to the town's betterment um, by assembling all three uh, really gives the town a lot of flexibility and potentially uh, good savings doing them all at the same time. Um, and by splitting one off, it creates a very small project. Some of the hardest projects to get built are actually the smaller ones because um, when you think of a fire station, everything that's in a large fire station is in a small fire station. All the types of spaces you would have, all the costs that you would have, you just have a little bit less of the variety. And the problem, of course, is that now that's packed into a smaller package, your cost per square foot will go up. The, um, the, the labor to build it um, you know, won't go down as much um, as it would if you were building a larger building. So. The smaller buildings actually have a higher cost per square foot to build. So spreading that cost out over three projects is a good decision that the town uh, building committee had made. And that's the intention, I think, at this point. So really building them all at the same time is a, is a good strategy and, and probably shouldn't be abandoned um, unless there's an extremely good reason um, because there really isn't a financial reason to do that. Thank you. Mr. Clark, is there anything you'd like to add? Nope, I think Jeff echoes everything I would have said. Okay, thank you. Um, I think we've established that this uh, that the program is for a one base station there and um, that it's been designed and budgeted um, as such, even though the design isn't final as far as look and things like that, um, the, the, the components that are going into the station are. Um, so let's move on to transaction. Um, so j just to, to um, let people know, how the board has proceeded. Um, the board retained special counsel from Hemingway and Barnes to help uh, uh, with the um, negotiation and um, drafting of any documents we need um, with the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Boston. 
and also valuation services from Landvest. Um, someone had asked why the board didn't do a highest and best use study. And um, certainly uh, highest and best use is um, a component of any appraisal. It's, uh, it's the bedrock really. Um, and um, highest and best use is based on zoning. In this case, this is uh, um, a residentially zoned, but as you heard, um, because of our, our bylaws, under our bylaws, um, municipal uses are also allowed on this parcel. So it's not that we don't have to um, abide by zoning, it's that it's allowed um, under under our, our zoning, uh, a municipal use on a residential parcel. Um, so uh, let's see. I, I do want to say that there will be more due diligence as we move forward with a actually purchase and sale. Um, and that's uh, a, the new development that we have to report this evening. This is not going to be a 99 year lease. Um, and if we could have told you sooner, we would have, it's a very recent um, development. Um, so I, I think uh, at this point, I would ask uh, Mr. Zulis, who's been working uh, on negotiations, uh, if he'd like to, to talk a little bit more about this. Sure, th thank you, Madam Chair. Just to, uh, just to elaborate just a little bit, um, the, uh, the fire, sta fire Station Building Committee had had discussions for a period of time with the parish and the archdiocese. It was handed over to the select board in late December in, uh, in early January, as you mentioned, the select board engaged a professional appraiser from Landvest who has 50 years as a professional appraiser and he's a member of the Appraisal Institute and the council is a real estate. And uh, his role is to give us an expert opinion as to value. We also engaged, as you mentioned, him and Wayne and Bars to the extent that we need legal assistance on the real, if there's a real estate transaction. Um, we have had uh, several discussions um, the goal is to get a non-binding set of terms, and I want to stress that, non-binding set of terms, um, that if we move forward, that would be the framework under which we, we move forward. And um, as, as uh, Ms. Collins mentioned, those discussions have included the possibility of a purchase and sale. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say one way or another where, where things are going to end up. Uh, but but it has included the possibility of a purchase and sale. And if if there is a transaction, as she mentioned, uh, we've also discussed a due diligence period. So beyond that, the discussions are going on. And as soon as we have something definite, uh, non-binding, but but definite in terms of a framework, uh, then we can um, then we can um, then we can uh, publish that. Thank you. That was much clearer than I put it. Um, so I appreciate that. Um, so, so yes, I just, to stress, um, it's, it's, a uh, it's, it's ongoing and, um, uh, still potential. Um, so I just want to see if there are any other questions that we've missed. Um, and I don't think so at the moment, um, and so if, if there are additional, if people have additional questions, we'd be happy to take them. And then again, um, you know, I think I would have Brian and, um, or Mr. Walsh and Mr. Clark um, just talk about um, how, the, how the neighborhood is involved um, as the design moves forward and, um, and what next steps they might uh, be taking. And uh, and I, I can just say if um, if uh, uh, negotiations got to the point where there was uh, um, you know a nine non binding uh, agreement, uh, town meeting would still need to vote on this. So there's um, you know what is it two hundred and seventy nine members or or something like that. So so that's a lot of people who would um, need to agree. I believe that's a two thirds. Is that a two thirds vote? Yes, so it's a, a two-thirds vote. So there, there are there are a lot of steps still to to go through, or two two big ones really. Um, but uh, but I do see one one more hand, and it's Ms. Powers. Um, welcome. Thank you. Thank you again. So with that point, what would be a plan B? 
you know, I mean, we've, I know you guys are pretty confident. It sounds like there's a lot of confidence on this zoom, but what would be a plan B, you know? Right. Well, I think, I think Mr. Clark um, said it well earlier um, that if, if this doesn't work, uh, they, they would go back and, um, and really reconsider some sites. And I, I don't know, you know, I, maybe they would put out another RFP, uh, but I think he could probably speak better that, to that. Yeah, than, than it, it, I think watch. that sums it up pretty well, um, Chair, as that we would reevaluate what our options are um, without that station or without that location. And um, we would try to, you know, things have changed, um, you know, maybe, you know, it's six months uh, past when we, you know, uh, yeah, about six months since we closed the last RFP, we may consider trying to do another RFP. Um, certainly other options. Uh, I don't you know. There's a lot of other options. We could have conversations about imminent domain. Uh, that would be something with the select board. So, I mean, there are other pathways forward. Um, I think all of them um, have their downsides and their challenges, um, but it's something our committee would have to go back and, and reevaluate and um, come back. I can't say that there is a this is our plan B tonight. Our committee hasn't voted on that. Our committee hasn't taken that uh, action. So I wouldn't be able to say uh, definitively what that plan B would be. Thank you. Thank you. Um, are there any other questions? I don't see any, anything else. Um, oh, okay. Um, Mr. Well, I. I, I do. I do want to just ask if um, if any board members might, if you have a question that you'd like to ask as a follow up. I don't mean to ignore you. Okay. Um, I guess you, you've been through so many of these um, uh, as well. Um, so, Mr. Walsh, Mr. Clark, if you if you might just talk a little bit about. Um, how, how um, having been through the town center um, process, how the neighborhood could engage in um, design around this project and um, and also what, what the next steps are for the fire station building committee. Absolutely. So um, once our next steps would be to transition from a schematic design, which is kind of our placeholder design into a design development phase. And there's opportunities for throughout that process to solicit feedback and get input, um, whether it be the building or the site plan um, and, and really work back and forth. So uh, what we would do is we would probably advance the design a little bit more. Um, it's currently a couple of pretty pictures, a um, couple elevations. Uh, and so what we would do is we take it a little bit further. So there's something a little more tangible um, to actually be commented on. And what we would do is similar to um, what, what worked really well with the Town Center Neighborhood Association is um, twofold, is before our meetings, um, we actually had one distribution list to them and they circulated it internally uh, within that because they're a neighborhood association. But um, anybody could let us know and we could add you to the distribution list of getting the design updates so that you have opportunity. Usually Jeff's team would give us updates the Thursday or the Friday before our Tuesday meeting. So the committee could have the weekend to absorb it and not see everything fresh. Um, and we would afford that same opportunity to anybody else that would be interested so that they can come to the meeting uh, and be able to provide comments and feedback. Um, additionally, at our meetings, um, our regular meetings, which vary from every two to three weeks, um, depending on work pace, um, we added a citizen speak at the end um, because there's up times where we talk about the design or we start going in a direction. Um, and we felt early on uh, in our meetings that sometimes there's not an opportunity. You don't want to wait to the next meeting or sometimes you forget to email. So we added a citizen speak at the end, in addition to the one at the beginning, so that you have an opportunity to speak uh, on the information you saw, but then also the information you heard that night. And I think that mm -hmm. was beneficial. Um, additionally, we'll be hosting additional uh, town meetings. Um, and certainly that's more for uh, larger feedback. Um, we've done that on the other projects, but we're happy to do, and hopefully uh, we'll be able to do uh, something in person, hopefully soon. Um, we had a good opportunity with the fire station uh, or for the firefighters, for example, um, we printed out the plans and went to the headquarters and put them on the wall and just had a really interactive discussion, sketching on the drawings, Jeff and 
engaging uh, in, in conversation with everybody and be able to really, you know, put your hands on the paper and, and really articulate. Um, certainly if we can't do that in person because of COVID, we'll do a virtual version uh, where we'll host uh, a Zoom. And um, certainly if the um, a lot of people on this call want to do a smaller version of that, we can certainly have breakout sessions uh, to mm -hmm. afford uh, Jeff and his team, um, you know, smaller one-on-ones. Uh, and when I say one-on-ones, um, you know, with, you know, maybe those on St. Agatha's have a different, um, you know, viewpoint or, or things that they want to articulate versus Governor's Road. So I think trying to build it into the macro and the micro as much as possible. Um, so really, I see that process being at two points and in intervals um, where uh, we would be able to have Jeff and his team. So probably around like a 30, correct me if I'm wrong on this, Jeff, 30, 40 percent uh, of the way through design development. Um, and then again, probably around 80, 90 percent. And based on our current schedule, do you know ballpark when about that might be? Uh, I'd say that um, probably early summer and late summer. No. So like June and again, September? Yeah. Yeah, okay. probably the beginning and the end of the summer. Okay. And that's certainly something that we have a mailing list uh, uh, that you can sign up for on the website. Um, whenever we have these types of working sessions, we email everybody on there. We post it on our Facebook page, um, East Milton Neighborhood Association, Milton Scene, Milton Times usually picks it up. We put on Milton Neighbors. Uh, we'll certainly have it as a committee meeting uh, on the town's website. Um, we'll certainly share it through the town's um, uh, new or um, distribution list as well so that um, that information is really shared out there. Um, I, so, Jeff, uh, yeah. Brian, I don't know if I missed anything in that summary. Yep, uh, Mr. Walsh. Yeah, one quick thing. I, what I did want to, you covered it as you always do, uh, Dan, pretty well, but I want to make sure that the, the folks that joined us tonight understand we are trying hard to work with everybody and get this done right. And, you know, can we make everybody uh, ultimately is happy to see the changes that we do? Maybe not everybody, but we, I think there's a lot of opportunity for mitigation. I won't, I specifically want you to know I was taking copious notes. Marty Shield, Allison and Brian, uh, Allison McGrath, Jackie, Jack Corrigan, Kathleen Powers, and Dave, David Finocchio. We'll look to see what we can do with some of these items that you raised. There may be other groups within the town that should take this more actively, but we're trying hard. We spend a lot of time to allow you to talk to us, attend some of our meetings. That The Milton Neighborhood Association was you know, dogged attending our meetings, making sure that we understood their wishes and allowed us to work with them. They they felt that went well. I'm hoping that we, uh, at the end of this, that you will feel that as well. And thank you for your attendance tonight. Appreciate it. Uh, heard a lot of good th things that we should look into. Great, thank you. Um, Ms. Power, uh, Powers, I, I don't know if you just left your hand up or if you would like to ask one final question before we close. No, no, no. I can you hear me? No, no. Yes. I don't know why it's still no. I just thank you, thank no, no. you, Melinda. Melinda, you did a great job. This is not an oh, easy group to wrangle. You did a great job. Oh and no, no. We, Every, we really appreciate it. Great. No, we really appreciate yeah. it. And I think that you will see now that you know folks are aware and know where they can get the information. And I, I encourage people on the website. I have signed up myself to get on that distribution list. Um, you know, the, the, Mr. Walsh, the East Milton Neighborhood Association, I have been in contact with them. They don't necessarily, you know, we're sort of precinct six here and there are a lot of precinct seven. So it, it's sort of not the same, although we we do have a common interest in that we're worried that's gonna, what's going to happen to the site when the fire station leaves. But that's just kind of it's. It, uh, you know, we, we've nicknamed ourselves Neighbors of St. Agatha. We don't have a formal organization. We don't, but it's, it is a group that's, you know, these are our homes. We've put a lot of investment into it, you know, a lot of, and it is, it, you know, it, it, it is a, um, it is something that we're extremely concerned about. So I'm sure you'll see lots of us and hear lots of us at these, um, at these. Hey, hey Neighbors of St. Agatha works for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you'll, uh, you know. I'm, I'm sure we'll you'll hear a lot from us. And, 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 and one, one last comment on that is uh, I'd mentioned that we can email you out. Uh, you know, we're happy if you want, we're all busy. Um, we, it's, it's hard to keep track of everything. 
if it's helpful, um, our uh, owner's project manager, when we have meetings, emails out the agenda and reminds all the committee members that we're meeting the following Tuesday. Usually she does that on uh, Fridays. We're happy to add you to that distribution list. There's others within the town on it currently. So um, you can reach out to Brian or myself and we can get you added so that you don't miss an agenda uh, or a meeting. That's great. That's great. I think, you know, um, I, th I think it is an acceptable, I think it's an acceptable excuse when most people have just been trying to keep healthy, make sure their kids are learning from home and keeping their jobs. So it has been an unusual year and it is a little, you know, I think we've all come up a little short on a bunch of things, but we, we definitely appreciate, definitely appreciate the time tonight. Seriously. Thank you. Well, thank you so thank much. You. Um, and thank you for everyone who attended and sent in questions and, um, and also Mr. Shaw, Mr. Walsh, Mr. Clark, uh, Chief Madden, um, thank you so much for uh, coming and, uh, and answering questions and, and sharing uh, information. Yes, Chief. Yeah, I, and you know, I, I'd like to take this opportunity to um, you know, speak for the men and women of the fire department. Um, the, the, the amount of work that this board has done, the committee has done in the select board, uh, we can't thank you enough. Um, and, and to the to the neighbors, to the neighbors of, of St. Agatha's, uh, you know, this means uh, the world to us, you know, um, for these new firehouses. Um, if you've never been inside the East Milton Firehouse, um, they're closed right now for COVID, uh, you know, due, due to that. But uh, if you've never been inside the East Milton Firehouse, we recently just tiled, uh, put down laminate flooring over all the asbestos tiles. Um, the, 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 the ventilation in that building is, is non-existent. Um, the, the spaces, um, the spaces are tiny inside there. So there is no room to, to socially distant right now. Um, it's a shared bunk room. I, I see the men and women of East Milton, but the women don't work down there because it's a shared bunk room that they choose not to work down there. There's only one shower down there. Uh, so this this firehouse is, is desperately needed, and all the firehouses are desperately needed. But the East Milton one is the one that, you know, I love working at that firehouse, but it's just one of those firehouses that just, it doesn't work anymore. And, and that, surprisingly, that's the newest one, uh, it, it, you know, it was built in the 50s, I believe. Uh, you know, headquarters, there's plenty of room to move around and, and, and socially distant and, and, you know, and, and the ventilation is good there. Same with engine four, the, the rooms are bigger. There's plenty of room for everybody. But uh, for the men and women of the Milton Fire Department, we appreciate all the work that everybody has done to to get this moving to where we are today. Um, it just means a lot. You know, the, the cancer thought is, is real. The, the, you know, for firefighters, we're about nine to 10 percent more likely to to um, have cancer in, in our lifetime. Um, just because of it and uh, because of what we do, um, you know, the, 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 especially nowadays with the, the COVID, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're likely to, to contract uh, communicable diseases on the job and stuff. And just to be able to go back to the firehouse and clean up and, and decontaminate ourselves and, 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 and not bring it home to our families is, is huge. So uh, we appreciate everything. So this, this is thank you very much. We appreciate it. Oh, thank you very much, Chief Madden. Um, well, we, we look forward to keeping everybody informed um, as things develop, uh, you know, in the select boards court and, uh, and, and uh, the fire station building committee uh, seems to have a, a great path forward to be, be working with the neighborhood um, and, uh, and we'll see how things, things develop. And thank you. I know it's difficult um, because it's uncertain and that, that doesn't make things any easier, but we really appreciate that you came and engaged with us. So we hope everyone has a good evening. Take care. Good night, Madam Chair. Good night, Mr. Wells. <laughs>